Let's begin today by a little mental exercise for all of you. So close your eyes, you know, take a restful from the, all those speeches and take a deep breath and imagine you are someone else, someone from a distant culture, a place you have never been to. And this person speaks a different language, eat different food, and believe different things compared to you. All right, now let's come back. And how did you, or how would you begin to imagine being that person? Now, I don't know about you, but for me, it was so difficult to accurately capture everything the person, every characteristics of the person I was imagining. And the truth is, is that I will confidently say that this person doesn't have to be some distant individual, you would face the same difficulty imagining being the person next to you, or even your best friend, or a family member. But why is that? And the reason is quite straightforward, is that we are conceptual beings with the ability to internalize experiences into abstract ideas and knowledge. And this makes each of us so unique and so different. And although how we are different is quite a fascinating topic, this is not why I'm here for today. Today I want to invite you on our reflecting journey on something related to that, to think about how we make sense of our differences using positionality. So what is positionality? Positionality is a concept used in the academia by researchers, and it's used to make, help the researcher make sense of their social position within their uh, research. So, includes, say, your background, your race, your age, your gender, etc., and how that influenced the study you're conducting. And this is used in various fields like gender study and other social sciences to theorize how different positions affect different topics of discussion. And although this is used mainly in academia, what if we can take this reflective practice and use it in our everyday lives? And so one of the fundamental claim positionality makes is our, our identities are not fixed, but are results of a complex social network that interacts with each other, which is why the word position is used in the first place. That demonstrates the idea that we occupy some unique social space based on our experiences and backgrounds. And all these social spaces interact with each other. So recall how difficult it was to Imagine being another person that you've never met from a different culture. It's so difficult because it's hard for us to actually capture all those things a different, a, pers a different person will be and how complex the social world is. And now to take that even further, think about how are our social world collide and form what we call the society. So the question arises, how could we make sense of this complex world? Well, one way I visualize this is first by think of us as mirrors. And all of us have this unique size, unique shape, reflectivity, or we weight different. At the same time, we reflect images off of each other constantly. And because we are different in shape, size, reflectivity, the same images doesn't get reflected twice, or never. If you take this even further, and in this sense, perhaps we can say that our social position, just like that, is in the reflection of each other. So take this mirror, for example. Take this mirror, for example. If we don't know our own characteristics within the social world, and we try to make sense of it. If I was a mirror, I don't know, I look at myself, I don't know who I am but I look at this mirror, which I don't know its exact parameters, but based on some loose conception of a circle, I know it's a circular mirror. And I look at myself through it and say, well, I'm taller and wider than it, so I'm probably not a circle. But I'm not quite sure, I might be. And through this, we can group each other using some common characteristics. You might be a squarish mirror if you're not a circle, you might be a postmodernist mirrors, for example, or if you're like me, a long-haired Asian young guy with, who likes philosophy mirrors. You never know. But remember, we are not quite the same. And what are the implications of this framework of 
understanding in the world. Basically, why? Why would you do that? And so, if we need each other in order to understand our position in the world, consider this. No matter how far one's belief are from another person, they are both essential to each other in a way that they always reflect each other's social position. Let's delve into the mirror again. But this time, we stand in a different position. If I stand close to this mirror, now I can see the line of my microphone, very detailed. But I don't see the whole picture. I don't see my face. I don't see my legs. But if I start standing far away from it, I get to see the whole impression of me. A little bit, give or take. Um, if that was too imaginary for you, let me translate this to a more realistic setting. That's something you might consider. Based on some loose categorization that liberalism is more open to progressive ideas, I am probably a liberalist compared to my friend A, who is very conservative. But compared to my friend B here, who is a lot more progressive than I am to open I to new ideas, I am probably somewhere in the middle, based on my two reference points. Note how similar this is to how a researcher position themselves in their research against whoever or whatever they are studying, just like looking at mirrors in a different position. Another example I've had is more of a personal one. I'm a Christian, and I started going to church by choice, not by my parents, not by my friends, but after being introduced to it in my school back in um, when I was in middle school. And I loved going to churches. I learned a whole lot about my life, about myself. But there's something that I've come to dislike about churches, or at least in my church, is that we are so quick to dismiss anything other than Christianity. If it's related to another religion, sometimes it's cast as demonic or say satanic, for example. And I take problem in that. And the reason is Buddhism, for example. When I start looking at Buddhism from a position of a Christian, I get to see some things I don't see when I'm within my comfort zone, within, within my comfort zone with my Christian friends. I start moving away and start seeing myself in that position. I get to s I get a completely new perspective. Things like how similar it is between when a Buddhist meditates and when a Christian prays, how similar that is, or fascinating things like how the difference between the conception of love have completely different outcomes in different religions, things like this. I would have never thought of that if I was continuously staying in my comfort zone, looking at myself only through this, at this close range. So what does this mean? Well, so I encourage you today, you know, to take positionality into your lives, to think about what if questions, to place yourself in different positions in the world and consider different positions because at the end of the day, all these different positions make up the world we live in. Just like when you imagine when you are another person, all these different perspectives merge into one in a big social world in a society. So maybe at the end of the day, we are not so different we are always constantly reflecting each other to try to make sense of who we are. So, all of us are valuable, valuable mirrors, and that's the message I want to leave with you today. Thank you.